talk about forehands today and let's talk about the, the idea of loop or no loop. And historically in tennis, a lot of instruction over the years, the old school teaching uh, had more of a straight back, back and down method to get the racket prepared as soon as possible when the ball is being played to the forehand side. But in modern tennis, you really don't see that happening. You see, you see players get prepared to play their forehands early, but they don't take the racket back and down. And you see more of a loop. So what does the loop do that the back and down doesn't do? Well, it does many things. First of all, it gives your swing more length and more opportunity to generate rhythm and momentum into the ball. So you want to get that swing to be a continuous movement, and we'll talk about how to do that later, but you want to get that racket to come up and get it to drop behind the ball and have a continuous movement. That movement enables you to do several things. It enables you to increase or decrease the amount of spin you want to play on your shot, increase top spin or play the ball a little flatter. You can change the spins dramatically with that loop. You can also play the ball at different heights and you can make ad adaptations to those heights and still change the spins. So you can do so many things. And when the ball's coming much faster in today's game, you need to be able to have enough inertia in the racket to overcome the ball. And uh, the loop enables that rhythmic swing to generate uh, force into the ball so that you can neutralize the ball and control it on its return. Okay? And when you take the racket back and down, you're very, very limited. First of all, if the ball were to come quickly, you'd have to pull the racket back and then reverse its directions to get to the ball. And you can't do that as quickly or as rhythmically as you can if you just drop the racket behind and come through. So you want to get that rhythmic swing, that one swing movement going. And uh, the other problem with the, with the back and down is that if the first thing you do when the ball comes to your forehand is you put the racket back and down, but then the ball bounces high, how are you going to get up to that high ball? So there's so many limitations to the back and down methodology. And if you're, if you're a back and down player, experiment. See if you can introduce the loop. Now, how big should the loop be? There's a lot of ranges in that. If you look at Juan Martin Del Potro, for example, his loop is huge. He takes the racket way up. A guy who's retired now, Fernando Gonzalez, he had it way up here too. I wouldn't recommend that for most players. I would say go more of the traditional route where you're in your ready position, the racket's right here at chest level. Just rotate and take it back at, ch at chest level. And I think from here you can start to get the feel for how that loop can come about. And what you want to do is you want to use your non-dominant hand. So when we talked about having your non-dominant hand in control in the ready position, we are going to just rotate and the racket heads right above the hand. And as it comes away, it's inclined to go right back and go into a loop. It's not likely to go from here and drop down at that point. It's more likely that you're going to create that loop and take that stroke through. So work on that. Work on developing the loop. Now, one of the biggest challenges of the loop is that it does get too big. And sometimes players think they want to reach way back. And I'm going to demonstrate for you exactly how far the racket should go back. And it doesn't matter whether you are a, a loop player like Juan Martin Del Potro who takes it very high, or you're Roger Federer who takes it back more in a traditional height. It doesn't really matter even if it goes here. All the players, their rackets fall right into a natural range. And by natural range, I mean that this range here is the range they're going to actually play the contact. So as they rotate and they drop the racket into that range, they don't have to make large adaptations. It's very powerful to get right into contact because the angles and the setup is exactly the same. So there's no unnatural adjustments. For example, I don't think I could get much power if I reached back and then tried to come into contact. That's a very unnatural movement to try to get power. So if I allow the racket just to drop right to this natural range right here, it's actually the same range as my contact if I rotate it, and it's actually the same range as my ready position if I rotate it again. So see how everything is, is relatively compact, and even Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic and Rafael Nadal, who have great forehands, you'll find, you'll see if you look carefully, the racket really stays more alongside them than it gets behind them. So, in summary, if you're not using a loop, Work on developing the loop. It'll make a big difference and give you so many more options on your forehand. And monitor how far back you're going. Look in a mirror and practice it and look at it and you'll be able to see what makes sense and what feels right versus what doesn't. And if anything, err on the side of keeping it compact. Okay? Get out there and work on your modern loop forehand and have a great day on the courts.